resources are in connecting with them. Um, and then we will uh, end by making a plan, uh, your own sort of personalized plan for outreach. Um, and we'll also send out on Friday, along with our recap email, a toolkit, an outreach toolkit. Um, so we'll give it just a few minutes for people to trickle in here, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so make yourselves comfortable, uh, get a drink, whatever you need to do, um, and we'll get started in just a minute. Great. All right. Um, so welcome, everybody. Um, in the chat, um, as we usually do, please share your name, uh, your personal pronouns, what city you are Zooming in from, uh, in your organization or school. Um, for example, uh, I'm at the bottom there, Ben Robinson, he, him. I'm Zooming in from Denver. I am with Great Education Colorado. Uh, we're going to start off with Great Education Colorado's vision. Uh, which is uh, through public education, every Colorado student, regardless of, regardless of their zip code, learning needs, language, identities, or the color of their skin, graduates prepared to lead their best life. Um, and this is sort of a new thing we're doing. Um, we just revamped our mission and vision not that long ago. I think a lot of you were probably at that meeting a couple months ago um, where we focused on what that means for our work going forward. Um, and then this is our mission. Um, Great Education Colorado harnesses the power of grassroots activism and diverse, inclusive networks to guarantee that public schools in every Colorado community are welcoming and adequately, equitably, and sustainably funded. All right. Um, our goal for the GEC Advocates Network is to create a space for us to build community and take action together. Um, we meet the second Tuesday of every month from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. I know I know it says register for the July 11th uh, using the link in the chat. Um, unfortunately, we've had a little bit of trouble with the link today. I'm still working on that. So that will come out in the recap email, um, but no worries there. We will have it. And then last but not least, before we kick it off here, our community commitments. Number one, move up, move back. Um, we would love for everyone here to have the chance to talk today. Um, uh, but in order for that to happen, we can't be monopolizing the space, right? Taking up too much airtime. Uh, number two, no one knows everything, but together we know a lot. Let's learn together. We all bring different experiences to this, whether we're an uh, active school teacher, a former student who now works in education policy, or just somebody who's really passionate about education in Colorado. Um, so let's listen to each other, um, see what we have to say, and um, we'll all be better for it. And then third, uh, presuming positive intent, but acknowledging our impact. Sometimes we say, th say things that we don't mean. Um, we're all here for really one purpose, which is to make sure that our kids and teachers have the resources that they need to succeed. Um, if somebody says something that is offensive or not what you'd like to hear, um, then uh, let's please, uh, you know, make amends, but also try our hardest to be respectful of others to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right. So uh, I am going to go ahead now and we're going to move into sort of our new piece here. So we're going to basically break out into breakout rooms for a minute, but I want to leave this question up here um, so that you all can sort of look at it and digest it. Um, but what we're going to do in just a minute is um, go into breakout rooms and we're going to have um, uh, the people on this call be paired with um, one of our representatives today. Um, and if we have 57 people signed up, so we'll probably have some more people trickle in. Um, and so we can sort of assign uh, as we go. Um, but we're going to have those breakout rooms open for about 15 minutes. And we just want to discuss this question. Um, what So from somebody, a non-legislator's perspective like mine, what barriers prevent me from connecting with my legislator? Is it anxiety? Is it that um, it's, you know, we think, well, it's hard to communicate with them like they're, it, you know, um, it's hard to get through via email or it's hard to get through via phone or what's a good time of the year to do it, for example. So those are some of the questions that we can be asking our legislators and asking ourselves in our breakout rooms. Um, but Max, if you could start putting those breakout rooms together, that would be great. Um, so we could go ahead and launch them in just a minute here. Um, and then we're going to come back um, after that, and um, we are going to come back to the full room and share out our, our holy, our, all of our experiences, um, because there's no way that everybody has the same uh, anxieties or frustrations as everybody else. 
Um, and then we are going to move into a more uh, legislative perspective um, part of the agenda after that. Um, but for now, um, let's just go ahead and get into those breakout rooms if we can. And then and I think Max may need, uh, Max is on as me. Max is what? No, I'm, I'm, has- I'm on as me. I just, I need co-host status. Oh, sorry, Max. My mistake. There we go. I didn't even think about that. I apologize, Max. <laughs> Luckily, we are like already ahead on time. So, and Ben, I don't know if you've done it already, but um, Mary and Javier and Bob Marshall, they're all um, on there. Yeah, team. I have I have my list in front of me. We're going to introduce everybody before we go in. So um, with us today, and if they're not on the call yet, I'm, I'm sure they will be. Um, so we have a slew of awesome representatives with us today. Um, Javier Mabry, uh, Mary Young, Kathy Kipp, uh, Jennifer Bacon, Bob Marshall, Barbara McLaughlin, uh, and Eliza Hamrick. Um, and I don't think I missed anybody. Sweet. Thank you all for being a part of this. All right. So, and what happens when you go in the room is I will go ahead and send that message through a few times, that text right there. Um, And just so you don't forget it, because I know I have been in breakout rooms before where they put the question up beforehand, and then I have five minutes in, and we've been talking about something that's kind of similar, and I don't have exactly what we need. So um, I will go ahead and do that once we get started here. And I should be done in 30 seconds, just double checking everything. Great, you are free to start joining your rooms. discussion uh, in our breakout rooms. Um, So what we're going to do now is just come back and reflect for a few minutes on that before we move to our next discussion. Um, Because obviously everybody, or not everybody, but a lot of people are going to have different answers. Um, So what are the barriers, um, if you are a non-legislator, what are the barriers for you um, for in connecting with your legislators? what are some of the things we came up with? Um, anybody can start, and um, let's just go around the go around the virtual room here. Well, I'll start. This is Jan. Um, sometimes you don't know if that person would even pay attention to you if they're not your personal representative or senator. If you want to contact a committee that you're representative is not on, will they even pay attention to that? Um, I, I think that, you know, our Kathy Kipp was in our group and she said, that's okay, but they would pay attention more if they're, you know, you're their constituent, but sometimes you can't be quiet. If, if you got to talk to them in the committee first, then you got to talk to them in the committee first. But then also, even if it hasn't reached the floor, talk to your personal representative or Senator, because it could come to them and they need to hear from you. Great. Thanks a lot, Jan. I think there was consensus in our group that intimidation, they feel a little intimidated. And I have a question answer to that. We're all just pretty regular people over there. You know, none of us, um, we don't have capes. We just ran for office because we we wanted to make a difference. And uh, we come from all walks of life. We have 
you know, some attorneys, you know, I'm a teacher, we have several teachers, we have um, people who just do, non, you know, there's just a lot of different people in there. So um, it's one of those, we're just like you things, you know, we are, we're just regular old people. <laughs> I think one of the things we noted was that a personal connection can help overcome a lot of that. And um, it's not always easy in the far reaches of the state, but once you have that face-to-face -face relationship, the electronics becomes easier, I think. I guess a follow-up question, Cheryl, like do you have experience forging that kind of relationship? Yeah, I've gone to the, you know, different legislator days and uh, or met, reached out to our rep when they're in the area. Um, and sometimes that helps you know, when you establish a relationship and, and sometimes it doesn't, but um, it is, it helps to know how to, how to speak to them, to acknowledge that, oh yeah, when you were here, you remember, and, and then go into your issue, it, it just makes it more comfortable, I think. Okay. I think that's great. Sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to ask a question about you know, I heard, um, I can't remember what the lady's name was that just spoke. Um, but that was Jan Tanner. Okay. And now the woman that just said something about comfortable, Cheryl Miller. Yeah, Miss Miller, um, I hear what you're saying about the comfortable piece, but I would say <clears throat> for me on a personal level, it's a lot less about being comfortable and being able to just connect and contact that person, you know, and then paying attention because oftentimes in, in certain groups, what I've, what I've experienced is a lack there of connectedness or lack there of even paying attention, you know, so no matter how, nice or cordial or what have you that I am, you know, I find that what works for me is just being direct, you know, and, you know, having four kids, I've, I've learned that over the years that sometimes you just have to be directed and somebody may not feel comfortable with it, but, you know, I look at it like this, you know, our, our children aren't comfortable in the schools with some of the conditions that they have to deal with. So, you know, we have to kind of get past comfortable and deal with, you know, what's direct and what's, what these real lived experiences are of our children in terms of, you know, what, what that looks like in terms of their barriers. So I don't know. Yeah. It's, and thank you. I think it's really, um, interesting to hear things that work for different people. Um, uh, and we need to bear in mind that um, there are a lot of different perspectives. Um, anyone else? In my group, we talked about some of the barriers that we talked about was accessibility. So accessibility around language was one of them, accessibility around time, and even accessibility to like, knowledge like how do we engage with legislators so we were talking about communities of color refugee communities but also youth um like how do youth uh, have access to language that is more friendly as well as like refugee or non-english speaking communities um we also talked about like what does it mean to to engage and prioritize youth in legislative work um, but then nothing is created with youth in mind right like how do we center youth or how do we make sure that it's at a time when they can participate um, an idea that came out of those spaces is like how can language justice um, for interpretation and translation be something that we incorporate another idea was like a lobby day for youth just like there are lobby days for different communities um, a point that got brought up was you know, at times um, there's youth that participate and some of them might, might be prepared and have a great experience and some of them might not be as prepared to engage with legislators. So that might not be as like satisfactory to students. Um, so I think keeping in mind, like, what does it take 
to be able to organize and prepare young people to participate in legislation. Um, and then probably one thing that I will add that didn't come up in our group, but that I just like thought of as I was hearing some other folks speak. I think there's also like, what does it mean for a legislator to be present when young people are testifying? We had young people testify this last legislative um, session, and we had some like legislators that were completely disengaged. Um, and so that turns our students off as like, maybe my voice doesn't truly matter. Um, so I think there might maybe some conversation around like, how do we carry ourselves when young people are trying to participate civically um, so that they don't feel like there's that very real dynamic between adults and, and young folks. But yeah. Yeah, I, I think, thank you, Magnolia. Those are excellent points. And we've, I mean, I think on these calls before, like we've heard um, uh, some people talk about um, youth testifying at the Capitol this year, especially, um, and having their voices not be heard or, and, you know, um, the signs of that being pretty obvious, as you were saying. Um, so I'm really glad you brought that up. And then also, um, uh, talking about interpretation as well. Um, that's obviously um, a huge barrier that presents um, in probably every district across the state. Um, and um, I would also be interested to know um, from legislative perspective, what we can do about that. Are there others who would like to share? I can just jump in as a, as a former teacher. Um, now legislator that I students are some of the best people to speak with and they don't need to come in with any like not like institutional knowledge because they're living it exact you know what's going on in the classroom what's going on at the school what's going on at home what's going on in their communities so they they have the knowledge they they they're they're so important to to speak with so Magnolia I love the idea of a youth summit or a lobby day or something um, I think that would be a great idea, even before the session begins, and then they can meet a lot of us. I'm sure a lot of us would be absolutely overjoyed um, to be on a Zoom with them or to meet them or have a hybrid meeting or whatever, and just kind of go through how education policy goes, but also mental health policy and gun violence prevention policy. These are other, other issues that they're really concerned with as far as you know my experience with kids this year. Um, so I would love to be a part of that. Thank you. Um, Representative Bacon and then Representative McLaughlin. Um, I think that one, I, I'd like to second what Rep Hammer just shared. Um, it's talking about this with another caucus. It's really important for us to, to remember who our constituent, not our constituencies per se, but who we're actually serving and what we're doing this for. And we said perhaps, you know, in another caucus, it's like we need to have a meeting or something like that and figure out how to go out before session and really talk about what it is that we're working on as well as how to surface ideas from you all. And then also map out a plan on how to be present in the building. I will say that part of this conversation just reminds me, and I'm, I'm gonna speak for some of my colleagues who are uh, committee chairs or other places in leadership. I'm sorry to do that. <laughs> Rep McLaughlin and Rep Young, I, you know, love you all dearly. I think that the building, we talked about like the second half of session when it turns into 200 bills a day and all of that. And the building turns into a bubble with the lobbyists. And I think we need to remind it and that it's not and burst that bubble. And how can we figure out as leaders to have regular touch points? And I'm, I don't, I'm not, I know like Rep McLaughlin talks to you all weekly and all that kind of stuff, but how can we, all of us, you know, make a commitment to collectively go to you, right? And do some reaching out instead of you all having to come to the Capitol to be sure that we can have those voices. You shouldn't have to have a paid lobbyist. You know what I'm saying? And someone who can stand around the building to be able to be heard. The last thing I'll say is I wanna also be able to support and figure out like maybe I need to save some dollars to pay for the transportation for kids to come or figure out how to talk to uh, the school leaders in my district to schedule Zoom time, because I do find it, even though people are tuned out to your point, Jan, not everybody is, not everybody is, our caucus certainly isn't on the ed committee, we're all educators and we just love it when, I mean, we just spend so much time with our young people, they are so impressive and it gives us 
the life as well as political motivation, all the things we need to be like, this is who we're doing it for. And it shouldn't be like tragedy and then there are a thousand kids in the building. You know, it should be way before that. So part of the question is, again, what can you get as a commitment for the legislators to hold that time and contribute to your advocacy? And whether that means I need to save 400 bucks to put kids in an Uber to come down here, you know what I'm saying? Then maybe that's what I need to do. And I'd be curious from you all what that commitment could look like. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Representative McLaughlin and then Representative Young. Uh, thank you, and thanks, uh, Rep Bacon. I agree with that, and uh, Rep Hamrick. Uh, in the Education Committee, we do get to hear a lot of students, and it's not all trauma-filled. There's They have really great ideas. We had really fascinating um, debate this year about expulsion in schools, and these kids had a lot to say. And they are the ones being expelled. They should be heard on this. Um, and I, I found the discussion was invaluable. Another really great day we had, um, not as cheerful, but um, after East High School, um, you know, and the shootings were there and we were swarmed with kids out in the lobby and they just wanted to talk to us. They wanted us to hear them. And those kids made me cry. They touched my heart. They had so much to say. And um, we're absolutely not doing them a service if we don't listen to every one of those students. Um, so I think we all kind of felt like that that day. It was, um, we just spent a lot of time out in the hall talking to kids and listening to kids. We weren't talking as much as listening. And um, at this point in their life, they really, really felt like being heard. And um, and I think the legislature did a good job with that for most part. There's a few people who um, did not do a very good job with that, but um, <laughs> but I think most of us on this panel um, did um, for sure. Um, we also have something called COYAC. It's the Colorado um, Youth Opportunity. And we have a representative. We have one student from every Senate district in Colorado and uh, one from each of the Ute tribes in Southwest Colorado. And um, they gather together, they meet regularly during the year. Most of them are by Zoom because they're from all over the state. And they meet with legislators and bring up bills um, to run in front of the legislature. And most of them are really fabulous bills. Um, they're not selfish. They are thinking of the kids in their school. We talk about um, just all kinds of troubles that kids have and they come up with really good legislation. So. Um, I don't know if there's any in your specific districts out there, but um, you should kind of look that up and see and see if we can get those kids together with maybe kids in um, the rest of their district to see if, you know, how many voices we could get at once out there. But um, we really, really love having student voices um, at the legislature, and I hope it continues. Representative Young and then uh, Duran again. So I wanted to expand a little bit and maybe Yes, just put it out there. I think the discussion about students coming to testify and feeling like they weren't um, treated respectfully is a really important issue to me. Um, I think it would be really helpful to have a dialogue and I'll put my email and phone number in the chat because I think Sometimes it, it happens with all humans. Sometimes we think we are being respectful, but the way we conduct ourselves in our jobs doesn't land on youth as if we're being respectful. So I think we need feedback uh, about what that felt like to students and what that what that behavior was, so we can have a dialogue. Um, it, perhaps it was the education committee. Usually that's where most use testify, but we also have them in public health and human services. So I, I'd really like to have that dialogue because mm -hmm. as Representative Bacon was saying, we really have to have an outline of what an, an accepting open environment is for both youth and adults because we, operate in a certain way every day, and that might not be inviting. Thank you, Representative Van. Uh, Duran? 
Hi. Um, I'll put my hand down first. Um, so what I was thinking about is what it would look like, because if I'm not mistaken, um, Jen Bacon is uh, my representative, but was something that I'd like to see happen because I have one child that went all the way through school with an IEP and another child that's gonna have an IEP until she leaves the public school system. And something that I'd like to see is maybe a special session where um, the legislatures took out the time to hear our children that usually their voices are never heard. And those that are our children are black, brown and native indigenous and other children that um, have special needs because they get left out of the equation and the conversation quite often. And I think that, um, I don't think what I understand and know is that um, parents of children with special needs are watching. And if we feel like our children's voices are not being heard and they're being made to be invisible or erased, you know, that speaks volumes to me. And I think it would benefit the legislatures if they created some sort of special session for children with special needs because they have something to say and they need to be seen as well. As a, as a greater part of the educational system as well. So, you know, I'm just putting it out there. If I need to help create it, I would love to do that. But at the same time, I think it's paramount that it happens because there's so many, so many people with children in the special needs community that they're never heard from and they're not even noticed. And, you know, that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. Duran, I think that's an excellent idea. And going back to talking about a student summit or something like that, or a student lobby day, I think it'd be wonderful um, to fold that, you know, if that's not something that stands on its own, at least to have that as part of that summit um, and to have those students um, be present and not just be present, but to have their voices heard um, and to be able to meet with legislators um, and talk about the the effects of um, you know uh, what they're feeling in school on on their lives, um, Max, and then Representative Kip. Yeah, um, I didn't have a chance to speak in a room, so this is only my opinion. But I think something that prevents me from reaching out to representatives is feeling, and also sometimes statistically knowing that their mind is already made up based on like what they ran on and like um, what their past votes are. And like, I'll also add the caveat of like, I think that's like good sometimes, right? Like for example, like Javier ran on reproductive justice. If there was like a total abortion ban on, you know, on the ledge floor and he voted for it because enough people lobbied him, I'd be like, that's really concerning. <laughs> Um, cause that's not what his constituents voted for. Right. Um, but at the same time, like I, we don't always get the people that we wanted elected into office. Right. And so I'm like wondering, I never know, like, is it worth my energy to reach out to this person when they have this, um, certain like voting history or should I, um, am, am I better off just not putting that effort and putting in my effort somewhere else? Uh, Representative Kip. And I'll just say, um, you know what, we're at a really good time of the year for people to engage with your legislators because we have, um, we finished the legislative session about a month ago, and this is a really good time to send your um, representative um, or senator an email or connect with them when we're not quite so busy. Because I will tell you that the 120 days of session that we do, um, especially as it gets further along, it gets more and more frenetic. And so this is a really good time to start having those conversations with your representatives and reach out and say, hey, public education is something that I care about. And what are your values related to it? And do you understand it? Like, do you understand how 
public education is funded in our state and what, um, how are you willing to prioritize this over other budgetary things? What is important to you um, about education? Is it special education? Is it um, discipline in schools? What are those issues that you want to reach out and let people who represent you know is important to you? I just would really want to encourage you to take advantage of the interim to reach out and try and have those conversations. And sometimes it is just meeting somebody for coffee, right? We don't have offices except in Denver. So, you know, I don't meet with people in my house, but I will meet people at a coffee shop. And sometimes I'll have, you know, you know, eight half hour meetings in, in a morning and just, you know, have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. We also, um, I know a lot of us have listening sessions or town halls or um, whatever you want to call them during the interim so that there are opportunities to engage. But I would just really like to encourage you to engage with your representatives when things aren't quite so busy and frenetic so that you can develop those relationships so that when you do get into the session and then you communicate with somebody, you're like, oh yeah, I met with that person. They're my constituent. That really just makes, I think, a huge difference um, to to those legislative relationships. Thank you, Representative Kip. And uh, Representative Kip is a, is a good place to find those town halls a lot of times on your website or um, Facebook. Um, um, yeah, and a lot of us have newsletters. So if you have a representative, go to their website, see if they have a newsletter, sign up for their newsletter so that if you know if there's like a local legislative listening session or whatever coming up that you have the opportunity that you get the notices about it, right? Great, awesome. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, Representative Mabry and then Annalise. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you everybody for um, hopping on this call. Uh, I said in my small group, I think it's, it's really important to have the community engagement as much as possible um, because uh, believe me, every single day during that 120 day period, especially we are constantly commute, we are constantly um, being um, communicated with by corporate lobbyists, by people who might not have the um, best interests of working family, students, um, teachers, the poor communities of color. And, and so it is really important to, to reach out um, throughout the year. To Rep. Kip's point, during the legislative session, it is very, very difficult to respond to every email, to um, take every single meeting. Um, but I still think it's critical to um, have those conversations. You know, I uh, raised my hand because I wanted to be responsive to Max's comment about, you know, um, you know, for example, I did run on reproductive justice and and um you know my vote might seem predetermined uh on that given issue um i receive and i think all of us receive uh letters from uh people who vehemently disagree with us on some of those uh tough issues right on guns or abortion right and a lot of those uh issues are baked in i think it's part of the democratic process for us to hear from the constituents who we disagree with, because we also represent them as well. Um, and so even if it's on like a hot button issue where you know that somebody's vote is predetermined, maybe you live in a really conservative district um, and you your representative isn't going to uh, represent your values, you should still reach out. And, and I do think it is important to have those conversations. Um, just the last thing I would add here, is where this is particularly important is there are some issues that I think are more on the margins that are less of those like hot button issues that we hear every single day where you might have a predetermined conclusion about where a particular legislator is going to go. Um, but they might actually be persuadable if they hear from uh, enough constituents. And so I would say don't ever uh, write that off and 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 do reach out um, if you feel um, compelled um, on an issue and you're paying attention to something happening in the Capitol and you want a particular outcome. I think it's important to reach out. Great, thank you very much, Representative Mabry. Um, 
Do we have any others? This has been a wonderful discussion so far. Um, and I think uh, gotten more um, cool, very forward thinking ideas um, with a lot of promise in them out of it than uh, I thought we would, honestly. So um, thanks to everybody for speaking up. Uh, Representative Kip. I'll just say um, one more thing. Um, I, I was fortunate um, during this session to be able to carry the um, school finance bill. And just as an example, I, I asked one of my colleagues, I said, so you, you voted against the School Finance Act. Why? I mean, it was actually a, a really good bill. It actually gave quite a lot of money this year. And I'm not going to mention my colleague's name, but um, the person said to me, oh, well, yeah, well, I heard from 52 of my constituents who don't think we should fund public schools. And I'm like, what? And he said, oh, well, um, and I'm like, well, you know, did they mean they're, they're charter school parents? I was like, well, charter schools are public schools. And no, they don't even think we should fund charter schools. And I said, well, you know, I think there's probably a lot more parents and, you know, people in your district who would want to fund public schools than these 52 people or whatever it was you heard from. And not everybody thinks that way. So sometimes it really matters if you just reach out to somebody and you get that little tick mark, because a lot of times we hear that from people, they'll say, you know, they'll be talking down at the well in our, in the, in, on the house floor. And they'll say, well, I've heard from, you know, I haven't heard one email that, you know, that goes in this direction. So sometimes even if you're that one email, then they can't get up and say, well, I didn't even have one email that was in support of this. I just want you to let you know that your voice is important because they, a lot of legislators, you know, they have their aides, count the number of emails they get on a certain direction in each topic. And come on, can you imagine any district in the entire state where the majority of people wouldn't want their public schools properly funded? The guy was just listening to the people who were his echo chamber. Thank you, Representative Kip. Um, and I'm, I just want to read what Representative Marshall put in the chat real quick, um, just to give some perspective. He says, I don't keep track of pros and cons on bills or issues, but I do listen to and read the cogent arguments from constituents and have adjusted positions based on bringing new perspectives and information to my attention on an issue of importance to them. Um, I do not have the capacity or bandwidth uh, to give attention to people outside of my district, however, unless they are you know, specialized lobbyists that includes volunteers um, and amateurs, not just professionally paid ones, but I do listen to everyone in committee hearings and I try to stay in my seat to listen to all of the lay witnesses that come and it has impacted my view. So thank you for that, Representative Marshall. Um, and yeah, so sorry, I was distracted reading another comment, um, but yeah, thanks again, everybody for <laughs> their input. Um, just a couple of takeaways here, um, some sort of big picture things. Um, one is that the interim between legislative sessions is by far the best time to contact your legislator. Um, we have heard multiple ways here. Um, so both via email, via phone number, we have some of those in the chat. Um, and then as Representative Kip talked about, um, we actually have some in-person meetings. Um, you can find those oftentimes uh, in legislative newsletters. Um, which you can subscribe to on your legislators, your, your representative or your senator's website. Um, so that's a really important way as well. Um, and another really big one that we've been talking about here is that student voice matters. Um, we've heard that from a bunch of people on the call, uh, whether it's uh, people uh, like me who are not in uh, elected, an elected official or elected officials themselves on this call. Um, and it sounds like we have some pretty strong interest in putting together something like a student summit for next session. Um, so with that in mind, um, we have a lot of contacts in the chat here. Um, and um, I have, it looks like a lot of interested people in the chat. Um, if you're interested in helping do that, can you please put your name in the chat if you haven't already? Um, and next to it, put your interest. Um, because if I'm looking at this in a few minutes and I just see your name, I might not remember that, or if it was something else, I might not remember that you were specifically interested in this thing. Um, and then we can connect people um, and figure out how to put that together. Um, but I think that's a wonderful idea. Great Ed uh, is doing quite a bit of work with student voice as well. Um, and to get it to the Capitol um, in a way that represents students who are usually not represented at all or underrepresented, um, I think is really important. Great, and we've already got a lot of interest. 
Um, so we've got three minutes left for questions. Um, uh, Annalise, you have your hand up again. Yeah, I just lowered it because you had acknowledged me earlier and then just I brought it down. But um, I heard a lot of great suggestions and great ed is has been said doing a number of these things to try and facilitate the connections between the youth. Um, we have on our website uh, about 14 different youth perspectives right now from funding to um, their experiences and safety, mental health, and uh, and more. So that can be a start for some folks. If you're seeing, we're, we're uh, always actually, we have a campaign looking for youth submissions to share their opinion. So we can use our platform and um, in that way for you to be empowered and and own their voice um it's in their own words so we you know <laughs> the, it, and sometimes very colorful so uh that's a start it's on our website under student highlights um in addition we we do have a summit coming up when youth are uh, we're working with youth to be present and active so that's coming up in september i know ben is probably going to remind everyone of some of the other upcoming events in our follow-up email. Um, hopefully this contact information can be added to the follow-up email for folks who didn't make it to the video Zoom um, and we'll follow up on our socials to, to give that contact information as well. Um, there, there was also one other shout out. We're, we're literally pushing for uh, our, um, everyone to reach out to the legislators and and have coffee or ice cream whichever y'all prefer or tea i'm a tea girl um so legislators look be on the lookout and and hopefully it's not too awkward for you if we are encouraging our um supporters to take a, a pic with you and, and hashtag it chilling with the legislators so they can um indicate that they have reached out and 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 were able to express themselves so we, we are pushing that campaign in our newsletters um in our socials and and are are hopeful that folks you know follow up with you and and, and take and get some coffee with you so if you have a favorite coffee shop also, if you could drop that in the chat too, so we can hit them up and prepare them for the flood of people who are going to come now. <laughs> but um, anyway, I just am really glad to hear so much and, and know that we're on the right track as well as, as an organization, really feeling, connecting everyone. You know, all these networks are doing their own thing sometimes, and, and here we are being a holding space for it all to, to come together. So that's all I had. And I would show the video, but Aurora is very active right now. <laughs> She's very quiet now, but she was yelling the whole meeting. So thank you again. All right. Um, all right, thank you, Annalise. Can, can I ask um, Annalise real quick? I know you said you talked about, you know, students going to get coffee and stuff like that, but I still wonder what are we doing to make sure that maybe the student is nonverbal? Maybe the student has a neurological delay where they can't or they don't have the capacity to be with the legislature for a long period of time. You know, I, I really want us to look at looking at ways to connect with everybody. And if we're really connecting with everybody, what we're doing is we're making sure that we put in those special pieces. You know, I mean, that's, that's really important. And I'm not saying that you're forgetting it or anything like that. But what I am saying is that we have to make sure that we connect with everybody that we can, because they're just as important as children that you know, are not neurodivergent. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thanks. Thank you for that. Um, and I believe as somebody who is neurodivergent that that is important. So, <laughs> well, I, I, would, I would definitely like to find a way to make that happen. Um, and with that, we are at 531. Um, everybody, thank you for making this, I think, one of our best discussions we've ever had in Advocates Network, um, at least as long as I've been the facilitator here. Um, thank you to all of our representatives for coming out, um, sharing their knowledge, speaking with us today. 
Um, and thank you for all of the great ideas generated in this meeting. Um, I'm gonna stay on for a few minutes and grab all the information out of the chat um, and make sure that we can get um, some communication between everyone here who's interested in that student summit started. Um, and then uh, look forward to uh, the um, recap email on Friday. Um, with uh, some other little things there uh, thrown in there as well. Um, but thank you everyone for coming out tonight and have a great rest of your evening.